Hey guys, I'm Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it, man. So today I want to do a quick look at a radio that some YouTubers have already seen. I bought mine. This is not a sponsored video. I paid my money to Amazon to purchase this radio so I could share this information with you. So I'm talking about the new Alence HD2. This is a revamp of an older model that's already been released for quite a while, the HD1. That's been out five or six years, I guess. I don't really know for sure. So this is the HD2 right here. Let's pop this open and take a quick look at it. This is not going to be an unboxing. This is not really a feature review of the radio. We're going to look at a couple specific things on this radio and uh, go from there. All right, so we have the radio itself and we have a battery, of course, and it comes prepackaged in a box with plenty of very loud, crinkly plastic. And here's the actual radio itself right here. Let me get this open. It comes with an antenna and a charger and a belt clip and a book and probably an FBI earpiece. And we don't care about any of that because we're going to get rid of it. Get that out of the way. So the first thing I want to share with you is the radio itself. This is the back side of it. Here's our battery, of course. So, and I, I hope this shows up on camera fairly well and it's not too blown out by the lights. This is VHF 144 to 146 for the US market. Uh, that's what it says. Uh, and it says it's 430 to 440 for the US market, this particular radio. Hmm, that's kind of sketchy right off the bat. But what I really wanted to look at, and I've seen a couple different samples, and I wanted to verify that I got the same thing. There's our FCC ID, and I hope you can read that. 2 Alpha 3 OO HD2, all right? 2 Alpha 3 OO HD2. So let's take a look at the FCC ID database and see what shows up there. So here is our FCC applications, and this is FCCID.io, and I've already pulled this information up for us. For 2-alpha-3 OOHD2, no exact match FCC ID applications can be found. And... It says, do you have a device with this FCC ID printed on it? It may be an unauthorized equipment or a mislabeled device. Email info at FCCID.io with a picture of the label, and they will conduct a more exhaustive search. Now, this is publicly available information. I don't know what database they're going to search, but I'm probably going to drop an email to them about this. This is the same FCC ID I've seen on every HD2 that I've seen on YouTube, and I've seen four or five. The interesting thing is this database also does what we call a fuzzy logic search, and it searched IDs like this, several variations of the ID. So even if those are zeros and not O's, take your pick. The database searched all variations of anything with a zero or an O in it, and they found no 2-alpha-3, O0, HD2 in their database. Hmm pretty sketch. We're going to put this on the spectrum analyzer and take a look at it. But before we get to that, let me switch back to the other screen and let's turn this thing on. And of course it has the Baofeng lady and it has a nice looking screen and, and I'm sure it has a lot of features. This is a two meter 440 DMR radio. Uh, even though the listed frequencies are wrong, I think this does US uh, frequencies, I would have to program it and CPS it, and we're not going to do all that in the video. Anyway, so that's what the radio looks like. It's a it's a hefty little booger. It's a bit of a brick. Feels good in the hand. The build quality feels solid. All right, guys, here's the screen cap from our Spectrum Analyzer run for the Alliance Alliance HD2 radio. And I want to draw your attention to a couple things. Right here is the output of each of the peaks that are showing on the display. This is listed in DBM. I am using a 30 dB attenuator, and the spectrum analyzer has that calculated in, so these are the actual output power values. The second thing, you remember when we mentioned that the frequency sticker 
didn't list US frequencies? Yeah, as it is right now, without going into the CPS, this radio won't let me key up on 146.52. It tells me invalid frequency. It will let me key up on 144, close enough for ham. So I did that. Uh, what we have here is our five peaks. The first one here is our fundamental, and then our second, third, fourth, and fifth harmonics. Now, to pass the FCC regulation, 47 CFR 97.307E, link below, the harmonics need to be greater than 40 dB below the fundamental frequency and no more than minus 1602 dBm of output power. Both of those conditions have to be met, okay? And if you look at this, this is a fail across the board, right? Our second harmonic at 287.84 is minus 867, which while that is 46 dB below the fundamental, is greater than 1602, which you can see here on our red line. That's our minus 16.02 dBm line. That's equivalent to 25 microwatts of power, by the way. The third harmonic at 432.16, is 7.43 dBm positive, only 31 dBm below the fundamental, fail, and it's well over minus 16.02, fail. Our fourth harmonic at 575.6, number one, is in the public safety band. So kind of a party foul right there because you could potentially be transmitting over a police or fire or ambulance kind of situation and cause problems. So in my opinion, in my mind, this really matters because this radio is splattering up into the public safety band, which is people trying to save lives and property, right? So harmonic number four is at minus 9.24 dBm, which is mathing here greater than 40 dBm below, but it's also over six, minus 16.02 dBm. And way out here on the right side, we have a fifth harmonic that's popping up, and it actually passes. It's less than, four, it's more than 40 dBm below the fundamental, and it's less than minus 16.02 dBm. But the fact that we even have a fifth harmonic showing up tells me that the harmonic suppression in this radio is hot garbage. Okay, so there is our spectrum analyzer run, and I did a frequency run from 140 megahertz up to 800 megahertz and our resolution bandwidth is 100 kilohertz slices. So this is a pretty detailed scan of this radio's output. Fail, fail, fail. Okay guys, that concludes the testing and what I wanted to share with you with regards to the radio. Now let me share a couple of opinions and other things here. Number one, I'm gonna email the FCC this information. I'm gonna send them the same screen capture that I shared with you guys as well as the FCC ID sticker off the back of the radio. Again, I bought this from Amazon. No, it's a blind purchase. No one at Redivis knows that I bought this radio to do this demonstration on, and I was gonna keep this radio if it passed. Which brings me to my second point. This is terrible. It's like playing radio roulette every time you buy one of these Chinese branded radios off of Amazon. Yesu radios don't have this problem, ICOM radios don't have this problem, but a large swath of the Chinese manufactured radios have this problem. And it's crappy that this kind of stuff gets pushed off on, on ham radio. In one of my previous videos, I talked about the uh, TalkPod, and they're trying to get around it. They also have a bogus FCC ID, but they also call it a GMRS radio. It's not locked to GMRS, it's open transmit on any of those frequencies. So. It's just one more sketchy way that a lot of these radio manufacturers are trying to get around the rules and regulations for importing this stuff into the country. I have nothing against Chinese radios. If they worked, I'd love it. It's a great price. It feels like and seems like a decent radio for the money, right? But it doesn't pass the regulations. And it's pretty clear to me with the bogus ID and those harmonics that we saw that this thing has not actually been looked at not this particular production model. Which brings me to my third point. Number of YouTubers have had this radio and looked at it and tested it. One in particular 
reached out to the manufacturer to tell them about the problems that he saw with the radio. They sent him one for an eval. And there's nothing wrong with that. If I'd gotten an eval copy, I'd be saying the same thing here. But he reached out to the manufacturer to tell them, listen, this is what I found, and I'm going to publish this. But before I do, I want to give you guys a chance to respond, and is this something you can fix or what? Long story short, they told him, and I'm not quoting, but I'm very close to paraphrasing. They told him that the spectral purity was not the manufacturer's issue. That was a problem for the ham, the end user. I don't know how we would fix that on a radio that you bought retail. They indicated that he had a prototype, and then they asked for it back. When he shared this information with me, our questions were, is that truly a prototype radio or is it a production radio? At the same time that they were telling him it was a prototype, this exact radio was already up for sale on Amazon. Again, as I said, I bought this blind to test. So the prototype that he got is the same as the production model I got. It's no different. There's not a prototype model that he was sent. This is their production radio. And this thing fails on multiple fronts, as you've seen. So I'm going to contact the FCC and pursue this. And if I get any updates from them, I'll share it in a short video with you guys. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it very much. Have a great day. 73.